His next section, he's entitled Nice Nihilism. <laughs> right? right. He says, I'm not saying that nihilism implies that we ought to murder, <laughs> rape, and pillage. Good. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, nor am I saying that nihilism implies that we shouldn't. It, so he's suggesting it doesn't say we should, nor does it say we shouldn't, right. right? Nihilism says nothing whatsoever about what we should do, morally speaking. So that's the idea, right? Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the issue here. It doesn't tell us one way or another because it suggests that moral um, uh, relativism, moral truths are, are just independent, I mean, dependent on us right. and what our feelings are and, and that sort of thing. So it doesn't tell us, right? Just because you like chocolate ice cream means nothing to me, right? right? Yeah. That's just your deal, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> he says, I do think, however, that over time, genuine belief in nihilism would seriously affect the way humans behave. So this is kind of an interesting point. Mm-hmm. Here. Now, he doesn't, uh, I mean, he doesn't pursue this uh, uh, very far, but he suggests in this particular comment that if indeed, you know, large portions of, let's say, a population are nihilistic with regard to morality, eventually, he's saying, it will affect the behavior of the folks. If there is no morally right or wrong, he believes that eventually behavior will be affected. And, and, and so that's what he says. Yeah. And I, I mean, not even to talk political, but just if you look societal and say, if you look at the progress of, of Western civilization, um, there's been a strong tenant, especially in the past 2,000 years, of Christian influence and, you know, the, the, uh, again, pros and cons to, to, to everything there. Um, but within the past, you know, since the 1960s and uh, an inclusion of, you know, post-World War II and uh, trying to figure out, you know, the, the horrors of war plus free love plus, you know, drug culture plus... Uh, um, civil and societal unrest and change. Um, th- there is this questioning now and and lessening. And uh, you know the the atheists have have championed that uh, religion is dying. Um, <laughs> and I don't view that as necessarily a, a bad thing as far as um, you know a, a, a culture can only hold on to a Christian or or, or any philosophical ideal that they don't actually take to heart in such a fashion that. You know, um, like look at divorce. A divorce uh, kind of started happening more and more in the 50s where it was scandalous and then it was more accepted and mm-hmm. then more and more. And now, uh, you know, whose fault is it when a divorce happens? Oh, no fault. The state has recognized that there is no fault in divorce. So you, you do have societal change where if you limit the impact of like, for example, Christianity or, or um, you know, if you look at it in small populations like um, uh, in Mormonism, you have more and more people being more accepting of uh, LGBT and um, uh, socialist ideas that they've allowed because uh, they've opened up kind of BYU and, and, and other uh, avenues to more m- modern culture. Mm-hmm. And so it's allowed more secular thought to come into their their space and so um a a big tenant of of a decrease in mormonism has been because of an increase in secularism right and so the point here is that belief does affect behavior yeah right belief does affect behavior and that's that's the kind of what he's trying to get at Mm -hmm. right um he says that uh, Rosenberg uh, kind of uh, disagrees with uh, with this <laughs> idea. He says since we've raised more nihil- uh, realism, but eventually all things would be probably get more uglier than they are now. He says uh, Rosenberg disagrees. He says Rosenberg says that evolution will keep us in line. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Evolution is our savior. He quotes Rosenberg here. The nihilist blow is cushioned by the realization that Darwinian processes operating on our forebears in the main selected for niceness. Right. So our forebears, <laughs> our, I guess, our genetic genes selected or, you know, uh, evolutionary process selected uh, for us to be nice to one mm. another. This is the idea of cooperation. Right where yeah. uh, evolution has made us cooperative creatures, yeah, because that promotes our survival. Right, right. That's the basic idea. More willing to share with each other, more willing to sacrifice for each other, more willing to 
cohabitate, all those, all those specific. Right. And so he calls Darwin. this nice nihilism. <laughs> right. yeah. The good news, he says, is that almost all of us, no matter what our scientific um, or theological beliefs, are committed to the same basic uh, morality and values. So we're all committed basically to the same thing, regardless of what our ideological, theological beliefs are. We think that, you know, pillaging and rape and all that stealing is wrong, right? We all are committed. Sure. Committed to that. Yeah. And so adopting nihilism as it applies to morality is not going to have any impact on our conduct is what Rosenberg is trying to argue here. Right. And uh, he says if Rosenberg is right, then the consequences of nihilism are not as dire as he thinks they are. Right. Our biology often forces us to behave. So notice the, this is Rosenberg's. So his argument is that beliefs affect behavior. Uh, Rosenberg's is arguing here. No, no, no biology affects behavior, right? Or he says, uh, so uh, he says, I think there's truth to be claimed that our biology does play a role in constraining our values, yeah. right? But he says, I also think that our biology is ultimately explained by divine design. Mm -hmm. It's what God has put, made, how he's made us and not by unguided evolution. And he says, moreover, to my mind, human nature isn't as rosy as Rosenberg paints it. Right. Uh, uh, you know, he's uh, he says, I'm much more pessimistic about humans than he is. Right? <laughs> yeah. As I said, it seems to me yeah, yeah, <laughs> that where everyone con were everyone convinced of nihilism, we'd be in the, a world of hurt. Right. <laughs> if if whatever I want to do is OK or is the only right thing to do, then who's to stop me from doing whatever I want to do, especially if I'm powerful enough or rich enough or whatever to do it. Right. I mean, yeah. that's the basic idea. I, I, yeah, I'm, and I'm trying to figure out how how like Rosenberg would would parse this because uh, again I, I've I've said it before where you know uh, if if you're five foot two and you want to be an NBA basketball player the chances are severely limiting to you unless you're Muggsy Bowes or, or someone <laughs> small I, Muggsy Bowes from the '90s that no one else remembers probably but. Um, there, there are biological factors that limit you from certain possible outcomes. You know, the, the, there's, there's no way that you can suddenly want to uh, fly, and all of a sudden you're flapping yeah. your wings, and, and you do your, your biology or constrains flapping your you. Arms. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, you know, you, you make wax ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wax that's ones. right. That's yes. right. Just don't get too close to the sun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but there's always a way. So what, whatever you put into place of somebody. Uh, I mean, the, it's what the, kind of the military exists on is breaking you down and building you back up, d making you do something against what you want to do to to make you a better soldier, a better person that follows orders, better camaraderie, and and you even see that in in um um like drug runners and mm. and those that work for cartels. I mean, you know, I read a story of a cartel that um you know m murdered. Uh, Two mothers and uh, four out of uh, the eight kids, and the mothers put themselves in harm's way, uh, you know, to, to try and save as many children as possible. So, okay, the, the mothers were constrained by biology to protect their, their children. Okay, fine. Well, what about the people shooting at them? Shouldn't mm -hmm. they, their niceness, tell them not to kill innocent children? children for, mm. for, for no purposes right. well no that's what the that they were ordered to so you know at, at, at what point you know do you say well but you know what whatever your biological moral thing that you put in my way i can always overcome it where i can't do that for any other type of you know logical restraint or um physical restraint or right. you know mm. chemical you know it, you know when you tell uh um depressed people we'll just get over it oh, okay well <laughs> I, I can clearly just get over that and i'm fine you can't do that when you when you say you know don't kill people well i can just as easily kill people if i wanted to right. but there's got to be something that um i think universally ties us together like like what he's saying there's a divine designer who's you know, made it all and has instilled into the us that knowledge, and we can always go against knowledge. I can always put the wrong answer for two plus two, right. but that doesn't make that for, answer right the, the right, right answer right yeah. or th there not be an answer. Oh, I don't believe in the answer, so I won't put one down. Right, you know, math is racist. Okay, you know, <laughs> I'm, that's that's not how how it works there. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's, it's difficult to see where Rosenberg would would be able to make that case.